Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be raising a complex number to the 13th, 13th power. Okay, this is a really large power and I'll be presenting two methods even though one of the methods will be incomplete and you'll know why in a little bit. So my first method uses the binomial theorem. Okay. What is the binomial theorem? The binomial, theor binomial theorem is basically a really cool formula or rule, whatever you want to call this, that gives us a way to expand a plus b to the nth power. And n doesn't have to be integer, but let's just say for now n is an integer. And we can basically write this as n choose 0, a to the power n, plus n choose 1, a to the power n minus 1, b. Basically what happens is powers of n will start with the highest and you just keep dropping while powers of b pop up and just keeps increasing. And we're going to end with n choose n, b to the power n. Why do the binomial coefficients or the combinatorial combinatorics appear here? Because it's basically when you multiply a plus b by itself many, very many times, you can basically talk about, okay, how do I form a product? I pick some A's and some B's, right? So this basically tells you how many of those you're going to pick. And there is symmetry, right? Because if you pick M A's, that's going to give leave you with N minus M B's and vice versa. Make sense? Hopefully this makes sense. This is a really cool identity and we can come up with other identities with this. For example, one of the really nice applications of the binomial theorem is if you replace a and b both with 1, you get 1 plus 1 to the power n, which kind of gives you n choose 0 plus n choose 1, dot, 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 all the way up to n choose n. And this is actually equal to 2 to the power n because 1 plus 1 is equal to 2. It's as simple as that. So if you add all the binomial coefficients, you get that because each of these represent the number of subsets of an element with n elements and so on and so forth. Anyways, there's a lot of interesting stories about this. You can replace b with minus 1 and then you'll get 0, so on and so forth. Anyways, let's, this is the binomial theorem, but like I said earlier, this is going to be incomplete because, I mean, come on, who is going to expand this? I mean, you can, but let Wolfram Alpha do it for you and hopefully it'll simplify. I don't know. I haven't tried it, but you're going to have 14 terms and then powers of i, so on and so forth. So there must be an easier way to do it, right? Obviously. And that's called the second method. Ta-da. All right. Now with the second method, here's what we're going to do. We're going to take this special number because it's a special number. I noticed that I didn't give you something like 1 minus root 2i or 1 plus root 5i, but I gave you 1 minus root 3i because you can write this in polar form very easily. We know the angle, we know the argument. How? If you think about the tangent, what is the tangent of the argument if like z is equal to a plus bi? The argument of z or the tangent of the argument of z is just going to be b over a, right? That's tangent theta. We also call this theta. And then you can write this as r e to the i theta. And this is called the polar form. All, all of these things I talked about in the lecture videos, go ahead and check them out if you're new to complex numbers. But let's proceed with the powers. So I'm going to go ahead and write this in polar form. I do need two things, r and theta. Now to find r, I'm going to start with this. And notice that r is the absolute value of the number. And that's the square root of 1 plus 3, which is 2. So the absolute value of this number is 2. And if I take out a 2, because r e to the i theta, the expression inside the parentheses give, gives me the exponential. That's going to be 1 half minus root 3 over 2 multiplied by i. Now, here's what I want you to pay attention to. A little bit of trigonometry, so bear with me. 1 half should be the cosine of theta, and negative root 3 over 2 should be the sine of theta, because you're supposed to write the number as cosine theta plus i sine theta, right? And then, of course, there's an r outside, and this is the same as e to the i theta, thanks to Euler, right? That's an amazing formula, because it comes from an amazing mathematician. Anyways, now, so we were able to write it almost, but can I find the theta? Think about the unit circle. At least if you know that on the unit circle, 
one half is the cosine of 60 degrees, isn't it? Or pi over three, so something like that. If you drop it, this is how I usually uh, teach it to students and how I remembered it. If you kind of make two types of angles, one of them is 30, the other one is 60, notice that where they uh, their projections are. This is gonna be close to one, this is gonna be close to one half. This is the one half, right? right? And this one that's close to one is gonna be root three over two. If you think about root three is a, is about 1.7, half of that would be 0 0.85, which is close to one, makes sense? So that's how we can remember. This is pi over three or 60 degrees, but I do need a negative sign. Cosine is positive, sine is negative. What does that tell you? Fourth quadrant. That's why it's important to know the unit circle and the quadrants. So you just have to reflect it and there you go. In other words, this is negative pi over three or you can look at it as five pi over three. That's gonna be your angle and you got the R, you have everything you need. Let's go ahead and do it. One minus root three I is two times e to the power. Notice that you're gonna write I theta. I times five pi over three, which is your argument. Make sense? Great. So what is so good about this though? Well, if you write a number in polar form, you can easily raise it to any power you want. It could even be 2023 or are we in 2024, 2024, whatever. Years go by quick, right? It's already May almost, a couple days maybe. Anyways, you can raise both sides to the power 13 and on the right hand side, you can just use the rules of exponents, easy. This is gonna be two to the power 13. And then the exponential is just gonna multiply by 13. That's gonna give us e to the power i times 65 pi over three. Awesome, that's a very large number. Let's take that and simplify it because it contains a lot of two pi's, right? And two pi is the same as zero because you just make a rotation, you get to the same point. Think about it, this is zero or two pi or four pi or six pi, whatever. So let's go ahead and simplify it. But what is two to the power 13? I think it's 8,192. And when you multiply this, we gotta simplify it, right? How do you simplify this? 65 pi over three, let's take that. And I want to think about the what is the closest number to 65 that can be divided by three and gives us an even number. I'm thinking 62, no, 61. 63, but that's an odd, so 60, here we go. 60 pi plus five pi over three, that's a 20 pi, which is two times 10 pi, so that's kind of like zero, forget about it, and we end up with five pi over three. Wow, you raise it to the 13th power, the argument doesn't change, yes, because, because the 12th power of this number is actually one. Identity, makes sense? Think about it. So that should be the answer, but what is e to the power i times five pi over three? Let's think about it. Roll the tape backwards and you're gonna know what it is. It's the same thing as this one, but remember what that was. It is basically cosine of five pi over three and plus i times sine of five pi over three. Fourth quadrant, remember that? So this is gonna be eight one nine two times one half minus root three over two i. Don't forget it's a minus sign or a minus imaginary part. And this is gonna be 4096 minus 4096 i. I mean root three i, we forgot, we forgot the root three. I don't know how I made it disappear. It's gonna be root three i. There you go. Okay, so that should be the answer for one minus, oops, root three, just can't write it one minus root three i to the 13th power. And let's see if I have an answer from or from alpha. Yes, I do. And it should be the same thing, right? And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.